Six Nations 2024, folks. Week number two, Scotland hosting France in the first match of the weekend. We will preview the match with some squads, some stats, recent history, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Scotland at home and coming off a win in week one. We'll be looking to go back to back, whereas the French, having lost at home in week one, need to kind of bounce back to get their campaign back on track. A loss here surely ends France's chance of any shot at that Six Nations title. And um, yeah, Scotland, kind of like a similar position to last year, want to get like two wins from their first two games. They've kept their lineup relatively stable. They've got Crosby and Richie Gray out injured. So they have had to make a couple of uh, changes. And um, Darcy Graham and Vipia now are not yet quite back available for selection. But the biggest talking point of their squad is probably Jamie Ritchie's lack of selection. It is selection-based rather than injury-based. So uh, Gregor Townsend talked up the cohesion of this Glasgow back row. So you got Jack Dempsey up from the bench at number eight. And I'm pleased that Matt Fagerson has shifted to six rather than being relegated to the bench. Because, I mean, Fagerson was huge last week, 18 from 20 tackles, didn't concede any penalties in the Scottish side, which conceded a lot of penalties. So a lot of tackling in the back row, especially when you consider Rory Dardish now back fit, co-captains the side at number seven. He's going to tackle a lot, and he's going to threaten at the breakdown. So it's a really nice-looking Scottish back row. I think Scott Cummings continues on in the second row. Grant Gilchrist is alongside him, uh, with Richie Gray being injured, and Skinner is still there as your lock replacement. Skinner will be looking to be one of those guys who cleans up the old penalty count because he was guilty of conceding four last week. Uh, front row is Schoolman, Turner, and Xander Ferguson, so that is steady as she goes. Xander is another guy a bit guilty of conceding a few penalties, which is kind of par for the course with him. Uh, he conceded three in that shift against the Welsh. Backs-wise, Ben White and Finn Russell continue on. Finn Russell continues to co-captain the side. Uh, you felt like last week when they were under that horrendous penalty count, kind of failed to get the team on the same page as to cleaning up the discipline. I know the Scots were maybe not potentially happy with the way the ref was blowing the whistle the entire time. Maybe highlighting the fact that Wales got away with a few things. But yeah, certainly Russell was not happy with the way his instructions were being followed uh, basically so that's a challenge for him and his captaincy but Gregor Townsend did also mention that maybe Rory Darge's co-captain will be the guy talking more to the area than Finn. Finn will kind of lead the way on attack. Two Pilotu and Jones continue on that midfield their relationship at 12 and 13 still looks great. Jones tackled the house down last week with 13. You gotta love the way Two Pilotu takes the ball to the line draws in a man and just pops the ball out the back to Jones. They do it a million times, but teams still don't really know it's coming. They still fall for it. Um, it's a great wee player. They'll keep doing it. Uh, Stain and Van der Merwe are on the wings. Van der Merwe obviously got two tries last week. His kind of ability to follow Finn Russell into gaps and be on his shoulder when he's going to pop the ball up. Uh, it's a good wee kind of bit of telekinesis they've got going. Is that the word? What do you, you know what I mean. They're good at reading each other. Cohesion levels are good, so... Yeah, long may that continue. And uh, Kyle Rowe gets another crack at fullback with um, Blair Kinghorn still not yet available. Ashman Hepburn and Miller Mills are the front row replacements. Skinner and Andy Christie. Andy Christie comes into 23. George Horn, Ben Healy, Cam Redpath are the other guys. I mean, Finn Russell got a couple of tries since last week. I didn't mention him. Um, it certainly was playing the house down when they actually they had some ball in that first half and at the start of the second um, I didn't mention the fact that Duhana beat three defenders. It's really what he does well. But uh, discipline, 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 discipline will need to be better because they conceded a ton of penalties. For France, I mean, keeping 15 guys on the field is obviously key. Willems has been banned for four weeks, so his French career may be done. We'll kind of have to wait and see. Also, Rita Wardy is out with a, uh, a wrist injury, so a couple of injury and force changes for the French. By Malvaca and Antonio, though, is the same front row. And they'll be really happy with the way Antonio put pressure on at scrum time. So it's going to be a very big test for Pierre Schoeman. Uh, you feel like whoever gets on top at scrum time will certainly put themselves one step closer to getting to the right result. Uh, Gabriel moves locking jerseys this week from four to five with Cameron Wokey coming in up from the bench with them as a being out. They needed to put someone there. And I think that's a great, a great rebalance because Gabriel is a big unit. Uh, great defensive powerhouse, and then Wokey's efforts in the air 
are um, pretty much second to none. So I think that's a well-balanced French lock and duo. And then Cross Olivon and Aldrit remain in the back row. Cross continues to be a tackling machine. Although I think Aldrit outdid him with tackles last week with 16. He also led the way for French carries with 15. But he only managed 34 metres. So in terms of his metres per carry, he was kept a little bit quiet by the Irish defenders last week. So he'll be looking to get a bit more go forward as he captains the side in the absence of Antoine Dupont. Uh, Luku, a lot was made of his performance last week at nine. He's no Antoine Dupont. But if you've seen him playing for Bordeaux this season, you know he's a bloody good player. So see if he's got a fully stocked forward pack in front of him for 80 minutes and if they're able to get a bit of go for ball what he can do with the side alongside his um, club teammate Matthew Jalibert who did indeed like break a bunch of tackles and get a bunch of run meters as he is like to do very attacking mind at 10. Jalibert and uh, Finn Russell's maybe two of the Europe's most attacking minded 10s going head to head so that's worth the price of admission alone. The midfield of Dante and Fiku continue on Dante was uh kept a little bit quiet in terms of ball and hand stuff last week only got three carries for three meters and a pass which is relatively low he's been a big threat at the breakdown big tackling machine but a big unit on the ball carry as well so ideally you'd like to see a bit more of that department Pinot and Bielbiere are the uh the wingers so I mean Pinot always seems to get a try he managed to get a try last week. He got a couple of clean breaks and beat a couple of defenders too. BLBR uh, is promoted from the bench. Came off the bench, two runs, two clean breaks. So, heck of a return. Uh, Galtier mentioned kind of the additional bit of speed that they get from him. So, Moifano, who can also cover the midfield, drops to the bench. They've only got two backs on the bench this week. So, Moifano's versatility certainly helps out there. And Ramos continues on at fullback with that big boot of his. Marchand is still on the bench. Sebastian Telfer Fanua comes in for the injured Wardi. Aldegheri is there. Tuilangi is still there. Roma comes in as a uh, potential debutant loose forward if he gets off the bench. And then Boudéon is also there as well. Could potentially cover the back line in a pinch. Very athletic back rower. But um, yeah, those are the two lineups for this one. So a little bit of tinkering, but no wholesale, cha wholesale changes Either way, stats-wise for each of the sides, I mean, Scotland will certainly be happy with their first half last week. That goes without saying. They had 58% possession, and were just cutting the Welsh to bits. Second half, 38% possession. Conceded 16 penalties, had two yellow cards. Conceded a couple of more tries. So, I don't mean to be a negative Nelly, but I will be very surprised if France don't attack Scotland at the mall. And uh, Scotland absolutely need to get the discipline a lot better. They need to halve that penalty count, ideally. Um, France also conceded a couple of mall tries too, so that might be an area Scotland looked to target, but to be fair, Scotland only mauled it, I think, once last week. It wasn't an area they were really looking to target. Their scrum was also four from nine, I think, so... Yeah, this French pack, I think, is going to be even more dangerous in that regard than the Welsh. So the Scottish front rowers will need to bring their A game. But they love an offload. Ten offloads from the Scots last week. Topped the offloading charts. Their attacking game when it's going. The likes of Tupolotu, the likes of uh, Finn Russell, you know, George Horn when he comes on. They've got some really bloody attacking-minded players. So they're going to entertain, one would think, no matter what happens for the French. I mentioned their scrum was really strong against the Irish. It was one of the real bright spots in a kind of, you know, a bad shift. Only conceded eight penalties, but the red card and double yellow carding, you know, was, was pretty costly. They did more than eight times, which is why I think they may target the Scottish pack in that area. But they conceded uh, 13 turnovers, which is just way too many. Like kind of unclinical, you know, lacking that, that clinical edge, which is... It's going to be hard to win games if you knock the ball on look like they did eight times. So a little bit too chaotic. And also they only won two turnovers against the Irish, which was the lowest of the teams in round one. So, yeah, the French will need to, I would imagine, kind of slow that Scottish ball down and be a bit more of a threat at the breakdown. But again, keeping 15 guys on the field for both sides will probably be pretty important. I mentioned that Scotland is not really afraid of this French side because their record is pretty even. Last five games, it goes... France, 3-2. to two. Um, The French did beat the um, the Scots at Murrayfield back in 2022. But the game before that was a Scottish win in France. So both sides have won away from home in recent years. The last three games, it's a French win at home, a Scottish win at home, a French win at home. So the home side has won the last three. 
Uh, the average score has been 28, 23 to the French. There's one blowout there, which was the uh, the Murrayfield win 2022, which was 36, 17, which kind of blows things out. Recent years, you know, the last year was 30 points to 27, very close. The year before, 25, 21. So pretty close. Um, predictions wise, the bookies are saying France are the favorites by three points, but the rugby forecast algorithm does not agree. The algorithm goes with Scotland by one point, kind of similar margin to what they won by last week. So number six in the world, Scotland at home, number four in the world, France away. One side looking to pick up that first win and keep in the hunt. One side looking to go back to back and really become a contender for the Six Nations. It is on at Murray Field. It's a Saturday game. It's afternoon, 2.15 local kickoff, which is 3.15 and Sunday morning for me in New Zealand, which is kind of horrendous, but I'll get up to watch it. Nick Berry from Australia is the rare, fingers crossed he has a good game. If you want to see a rugby podcast, me and Tony from Distracted Sports make one. It's called Two Cents Gets Distracted. It's available on all your regular podcasting platforms or on YouTube. The last episode was on my channel. The previous episode was on Tony's, so links up there or down there but yeah you guys let us know your thoughts scotland or france game number one of week number two you guys take care and um, i'll talk to you guys again soon see you later.